Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nicole? nine. Yep, I'm good. Doug was your typical accountant that you would expect to see when you walk into a company for the first time. Oh, I've been in this office for 18 years, but it's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. I would think over the course of maybe 15 years, it took us to really get Doug to let his hair down. And when he did, it was really letting his hair down. Holds like a model. Who are you, Doug? Well, I used to sit here and just fantasize about doing this. And I kept telling you, you could do it. Yes, you did. I kept saying, you could do that. Right. Age is not the limitation that you think it is. Who doesn't look much like a corporate accountant anymore? I'm an electric lampshade. There we go. Hi, guys. Hi, Adam. How are you? All right. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Great. Sorry for my slight delay there. No worries. I appreciate you guys holding on. So nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so first thing is, thanks for really fucking with my brain the other day. <laughs> 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 always happy to oblige yeah. <laughs> well it's always it's important to do that you know it's important to uh it's 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 so um uh it reminds me that it's just so rare where you absolutely don't know what you're in for when you see a film so i appreciate it very much i have no idea I still still trying to figure it out to be honest <laughs> can you okay so we're talking to uh Doug McCorkle, which is the man in the bright blue shirt there, who is the subject of I'm a lampshade. Uh, I'm an electric lampshade, excuse me. Um, and a filmmaker, John uh, Clayton Doyle, in the tracksuit. Nice to meet Correct. you both again. And, nice and, to meet um, you. Yeah. Uh, so can you kind of tell me a little bit about the origin story? Uh, uh, like how you guys collaborated yeah talk about the collaboration uh, anybody can go first but uh, i would love to know sort of how that began and how you started to uh figure out what this film was gonna the, what the shape it was gonna take well i th I, th I think we can both jump in on this so, so. um the the uh the origins of how john and i started working together uh came about when um, I uh, decided to make a music video, a private music video for a um, supervisor of mine who was retiring. I had worked for for 15 oh, years and okay. I wanted to do something that was completely unexpected and out of the box. And um, uh, so John and John was the choreographer for that music video. And we started collaborating then. Um, the music video was a great success, got a standing ovation at the, at the company I was working for at the time. And, uh, so I got the bug, so to speak, and wanted to keep working with John. And we, we continued to work together and John turned to me one day and said, well, what are we going to do next? And I really wasn't sure. And John said, let's make a short film. Let's make a short film that includes a, a music video in the format and um that idea for a short film grew over several years mm -hmm. um into i'm an electric lampshade which is the feature length film you see today um it and john's creativity and coming up with 
interesting characters and interesting locales for us to film at. And uh, my, my being willing to follow his direction all along the way uh, ended up with just an exciting film that, as you said, kind of surprises everybody when they see it. Yeah, it certainly doesn't start. I mean, it certainly doesn't um, go anywhere you can possibly predict. I mean, I it's funny because the film, I love the premise, which I thought was a straight off documentary. I was like, kind of curious, like I was thinking already, how, uh, and I'll explain that like the opening sequences are where you are uh, retired about your, you, your, yourself, but your character of, of yourself as well, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's both. When I Go retire, ahead. it's kind of much more straight ahead documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, right. um, but then the, the film sort of veers mm -hmm. into a bit of a more narrative format after that. Yeah, well, I would even argue, uh, and, jo and John, please jump in and interrupt me by all means, because I want to hear from you about this. Uh, this could be more of a conversation, but it's uh, so what I did is I remember going upstairs, I started watching, I thought, oh, this is going to be fun, because this is a guy who's kind of lived a conservative life, um, and not not necessarily politically speaking, but, you know, lived conventionally, and then was about to retire and decided he really needed to shake things up and, and uh, allow himself to finally feel alive. And, you know, so it was going to be, oh, this is going to be fun to watch. And so I grabbed my girlfriend upstairs, I said, come on down and watch. And then it, it became this other film entirely which was like for both of us, a real welcome surprise. This journey that the, that you go on with with the film, actually, us as, watch, as viewers, you know. I'm a big fan of Spike Jones, and my mm -hmm, favorite film too. is Being John Malkovich, which takes a real life person and creates a fictional world around him. And as well, uh, Spike's next movie adaptation mm -hmm. is based on the author of Keith. And um, again, creates this fictional world around the um, the novel. And Doug was a willing participant, and everything, all the building blocks of the film are telling Doug's story. And okay. I think when you get more into the imaginative kind of music video style storytelling, it's mm -hmm. still trying to convey the journey of going from being an accountant to being an artist and right. being surrounded by creatives for the first time and getting rid of that idea of, of be, an accountant's mindset that everything needs to line up and fit in a box. When you dive into the creative world, there's no rules. So really kind of embracing that is exciting. And that's what the second sort of chapter of the movie, which is broken up into four chapters is about. Mm -hmm. And then the third chapter is the fear of being an artist and the vulnerability and right. going, holy S, what have I done? Have I gone too far? Have I risked too much? And then mm -hmm. the final concert at the end is kind of the reward. And Doug is, in my mind, not somebody who his whole life dreamed of being a, a singer, I think Doug is somebody who lived a whole life of blending in and mm -hmm, at a certain point mm -hmm. said, all right, I'm ready to be brave and stand out and step outside the world that I've known my whole life. Uh, well, what you brought up a few minutes, a moments ago about this, the fear of, of hurling, hurling or, or throwing yourself into uh, the life of an artist. Um, it, it, it's true. And when I'm watching, I'm feeling some anxiety when I'm watching the film because I'm I'm afraid for for Doug, but because uh, I'm not sure what this adventure he's going through, he's putting himself in all these situations that could be they're murky. They're you know you don't know what the outcome of these things, and and it's 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 a bit unsettling as somebody who's watching because maybe I can relate. Maybe you know he is the projection, to our avatar, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. or what a lot of us wish we could do or want to do, but are maybe too, um, you know, afraid to do it or intimidated, you know? So yeah, well, it's, it's absolutely too true, Adam, that, that all along the way, that anxiety you felt, I certainly felt just in making the film um, mm -hmm. because uh, John's one of John's greatest talents is, is casting and working with real life characters in 
acting in film and here I was a real life character and in, in the biggest sense of the word um because I was kind of you know pursuing this very unusual path to doing something that was really stepping outside of my comfort zone it wasn't like I dipped my toe in the water I kind of jumped in head first so um yeah it's it was exhilarating but at the same time quite scary uh very much a different feeling for me to have to be so vulnerable and and um uh open myself to the, up to the creative and um I couldn't have done it without great coaching from so many people singers dance dance coaches performance coaches um I really got a crash course in um being a performer so uh mm -hmm. um it was quite a journey and the outcome what do you feel like uh now that that you did do this and you did make this film and you did take all those kind of risks that you were talking about wh where do you go from here <laughs> that's a good question is there any going back <laughs> no there isn't any going back that's for sure um yeah. I I would never return to the to the corporate life I mean that's that's now in the past for me um where it goes next is is the next adventure um and it's really hard to say Adam for sure I mean there's a possibility there could be another project there's a possibility of doing some more music perhaps there's a possibility of going in a completely different direction and doing something else um creative in its own right so um we'll see I think the the beautiful thing for me is that that we did do this and and uh really with the help of a whole host of people um yeah including all the post-production folks that that did just a such a fantastic job making this film um you know that that we have this product that I can or this film that I can look back on and go wow you know that's quite an accomplishment for me personally and um you know it it, it makes you feel more confident that maybe you can do something else you just never know <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will I say it. Ahead, uh, yeah, I, and I love that this story is centers around someone in their early 60s. You know, I think, I think that's there's unfortunately a rareness to that and also a lot of inspiration that uh, we can reinvent ourselves throughout mm -hmm. our, our lives. And um, this film represents almost a decade, you know, in the making for Doug. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty remarkable and I think that it's natural to to need some distance from that to really reflect on what it all amounts to yeah well said and I was going to I was actually about to say uh well I I'm I I, I think that uh there are many potential adventures ahead for not only Doug and you know for anybody but but uh, as uh, somebody who's roughly Doug's age I definitely think of him as a very young man who <laughs> who still has many adventures potentially to come. And um, the name of the film <laughs> with this awesome film is called I'm an Electric Lampshade. And um, it is going to be uh, available on digital and on demand as of March 28th, uh, which uh, will be already kind of happened when I post this because I want people to go right from this conversation directly to see the film and not to wait, but to go, but don't interrupt. Don't, don't stop us uh, this conversation but go right afterwards and watch i'm an electric lampshade and it had an uh, pretty pretty impressive festival run was that something you made a very conscious decision to do because you can have some amazing conversations and audience uh, experiences if you can get to the festivals of course uh but I, it just you have a lot of uh of uh, uh festivals mentioned on mm -hmm. your on your website so yeah Sad. absolutely Sad it, it, it was a conscious decision to to go ahead and and pursue the festival. Mm -hmm. Sorry, John, go ahead. I was just going to say, twenty twenty one was really not the ideal mm -hmm. year for festivals, and we did no. miss out on that experience of being in the room with other filmmakers and producers okay. and feeling right. their energy because so much went online, and you lose mm -hmm. that that um, that festival experience. Right. Uh, 
I did have the fortune to go to the Warsaw International Film Festival, which was incredible. It was in person. We had four screenings. It was a big deal there. And I think the public were so excited to have this annual festival. So that was the one that I got to go in person and do Q and A's and see really how people were responding to the film. Mm -hmm. It yeah, was a difficult time. Yeah. We And we knew that that would be the case, but um, we really wanted to get the film out uh, to the festivals, um, you know, just to try to, uh, build up some interest in the film, get oh, our for sure. media presence out there. Mm -hmm. um, and and fortunately for us, even though, as John points out, you know, we didn't have the luxury of being able to go to in-person festivals, which was unfortunate. Um, we had a really good film festival run. It appeared at 22 film festivals worldwide. It won awards at 12 of them. So amazing. So really, all in all, we couldn't have been more pleased with that outcome. This is uh, what what would be called a great film festival film or festival film actually, but uh, I, I I really will urge people to go and check it out because I think it's a very special and exceptional uh, you know work of art, frankly. Thank you, you very know? much. Yeah, sure, my pleasure. Yeah, and uh, uh, what John? What about you? What's coming? What do you have uh, coming? Are you going to make more feature films? Is that in your future? Absolutely. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think that as an as a first time filmmaker um, and coming from background directing theater and dance and as a casting director, um, you know, I, I don't think it's uh, realistic that I'm going to just jump into another feature film, but I am writing one, which okay. will again have this blend of a real life setting and real characters, but a lot of uh, fantasy um, around it. Mm -hmm. Well, Doug's smiling. I assume he <laughs> he's looking forward to that and maybe looking forward to collaborating at some point if possible. Absolutely. Um, although I, um, I I won't mind if John casts another character as the main character this time. <laughs> uh, but we had a we had a we have had a uh, great run working together. So it's it's um, it's been a great effort. Well, again, I mean, uh, I think it's a very singular film. It has a real independent uh, voice to it. If uh, Maybe that's not the right way of, of, of describing it, but it's very unique and it has a confidence in the filmmaking. Uh, it's very impressive. It really is. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much, I, Adam. Oh, sure. Again, it's called I'm an Electric Lampshade. The title is comes up in the film, doesn't it? Pretty sure if I remember. Yes. I saw it a while ago, but. So I think Doug is going through this journey at this point in his life to figure out who he is or who he's mm -hmm. going to be. So mm -hmm. I think that that relates to the I am part of the title and, and kind of people asking him along the way, who are you? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I'm an electric lampshade just happened to be um, during the original music writing process. I mm -hmm. said, Doug, go, go write right. some stream of conscious lyrics. And the first lyric he ever wrote was, I'm an electric lampshade. So it just made sense that there was this declarative statement about figuring out who he is. And no one else can say I'm an electric lampshade other than Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug did, I, I didn't know if you had something to say. Uh, no, it, I, you know, it was just it was just a stream of consciousness. Um, lyric that came out and uh, uh, we haven't regretted it since <laughs> <laughs> apparently not it's a, inspired this title and uh and and your lovely your lovely wife uh is it jill no it's um gina i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Gina? yeah gina no that's okay gina g-i-n-a yeah yeah sorry about that uh and i hope she's well what, what was her response to the film um, she she likes the film she she closes her eyes when she sees herself in it <laughs> as you can Not imagine the only one yep. yeah but um but uh she she absolutely enhanced the film in participating in it um i i compliment her because her she was very vulnerable in the film she was um, we portrayed her real life um struggles 
with mental mm -hmm. illness in the film. Mm -hmm. She struggled with depression and anxiety for her entire life. Yeah. Um, and she she was very open and honest about that, about the fact that she's she'd been hospitalized a few times for it. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so so I I really applauded her for doing that. And I think it brought a, a real touching uh, element to the film because we are I'm very fortunate. I I live with her. I love her to bits and she's my best friend. So it's mm -hmm. so it's a really wonderful uh, combination to have throughout making this film i i always came back to this um idea or notion of what made this film so unique amongst mm -hmm. all the other mm -hmm. things you know you call it something singular you're just never gonna find a film with a real life husband and wife who are not actors acting out their lives i mean that to me is one of the most remarkable thing about this film yeah and i will say uh, i having had small experience much smaller but having had an experience of being in a relationship with somebody with with, with mental illness it's um it's it's no it's not an easy thing you know for either either person in the relationship um however having said that um <laughs> you know she in a way anchors the film I, it, it, that was my experience um there's something about her you know quote unquote performance in the film which it really feels like she gives it this you know solid um strong center uh on some level because you don't know where the heck doug's going <laughs> you know you yeah. don't know where he's ending up or what he might uh end up trying or doing or wh where what have you but but with 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 Gina, we we have a sense of that of where she she has a strong sense of herself, regardless of her her issues, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing, you know. And I do think that as a couple, of you guys were really it was very moving to to see that in your in your affection and uh, the bond you guys have. It's it was very moving. Thank you very much. Well, mm -hmm. I love her to bits, as I said, Adam. So it's. Um... So it was wonderful to have her participate, and she really did add a, an amazing element to the film that we couldn't have yeah. captured otherwise. Well, I thank you both for making time for this today, and you know, I wish you much continued success with "I'm an Electric Lampshade." Thank you. And, um, you know, and we'll st we'll we'll play the trailer at the beginning of, and we'll we'll get we'll get people. People are going to want to see this film. They're going to scratch their heads and say, what are they, these guys talking about here? So <laughs> I've got to figure it out. And then they're going to want to say, let me get John and, and Doug's uh, e emails. Or people are going to want to talk to you guys, um, <laughs> and connect with you guys. I'm so lucky that I get this opportunity. And I've had Thank this you. opportunity today. Think, yeah, sure. My Thank pleasure. you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good, you too. Nice meeting you both. You too.